this PowerPoint talk about the women's health, maternity, and newborn. The introduction talking about the fundal height. So in this picture, you can say mother, abdomen, and pregnant uterus. So clinical indicator for fetus growth it first empty the bladder when we go for the measurement the fundal height we request mother be empty the urinary bladder easy way to say request them to go for the pee when their bladder will be empty we will check it so NPLEX board sometimes asks if a mother came to you and she has a history of 20 weeks of pregnancy. So where should be the fundal height? So at 20 to 22 weeks, the fundal height should be up to the umbilicus. So please have a look at the picture. This is the umbilicus. This is the point we call pubic symphysis. And this is the point we call diploid process. So three important surface marking is important here. Pubic symphysis, umbilicus, and diploid process. So during the 20 weeks, it up to 20 or 22 weeks. Fundal height uh, in centimeters um, equal the fetal length in 20 plus minus two centimeter. This is the formula basically. At 36 weeks, fundal height at the diploid process. But 40 weeks, it should be a little bit down because of it should be expand side to side, lightening. At 38 weeks, fundal should be descend, which is called lightening or 40 weeks. What is quickening? So when baby first movement and mother can feel it, fetal movement around 60, 16 to 18 weeks, in case of multipara, right? Before then the primipara. If mother is the first time pregnant, we call primipara. But if mother have already gave the delivery of a baby, it is second or third time, we call multipara. So we can count the expected date of delivery. And this is called Nagel's rule how we collect it. So substrate, substrate or minus three months from the first day of the last menstrual period and at seven days also at one years. So last date of menstruation period plus one year plus seven days minus three months. It should be the expected date of delivery, like August 29 is the last date of menstruation period. So you have to minus three months from the August 29. Then you have to add one year. So August 29, 2021, one year should be August 29, 2022 plus minus three months, after minus it should be May and add seven days. It should be July 5, 2022. Next here. So here talking about the a special test is we call COM test. So COM test we do in case of RH incompatibility. 
example, if mother is RS negative and baby is RS positive. Example, this picture, RS negative blood cell and RS positive blood cell and mother produce antibody. It is easy to detect by compost, indirect and direct. Direct one, maternal blood and positive, making antibody, anti-RH. No benefit in giving RHO gram if positive. RHO GAN for every RH pregnant women with a negative contest. In case of direct contest, we can get the fetal blood, but indirect maternal blood. In case of positive antibody in the fetus blood, RH, fetal RH positive red blood cell are destroyed. And patient develop anemia and jaundice. When red blood cell reduce the number of destroy, hemoglobin will go down, anemia develop. In the same time, when red blood cell is destroyed, bilirubin come in the blood, increase the bilirubin level and patient develop jaundice. And when unconjugated bilirubin too much and produce carnic errors to the newborn. Here showing contraction test. So external and internal fetal monitoring. So this is the contraction test. So what it is? Contraction test we do to assessment the fetal heart rate in response to the contraction, right? So if the contraction stress test is negative, it means it is normal. And fetus should be, should not have left declaration in 10 minutes. That two way external and internal. In external means, you can see the device outside and also transducer uh, for sensing the fetal heart rate. It is outside the abdomen. You see, Se outside the abdomen. And this is the contraction of the uterine wall. This is the uterus and fetal heart rate monitor. But internal means you say intrauterine pressure catheter. So it is directly touched to the fetal head through the bath canal. So it is called internal. So whatever external or internal contraction test we do to assessment fetal heart rate in response to contraction. And fetal, fetus should not have let this declaration in 10 minutes. As I told you, contraction stress test negative means it is normal. Now talking about the acceleration, normal fetal response to the movement or contraction non press test, basically variable and acceleration it is called reactive. Reactive means normal or good. So if you tell me non press test, this is the test we do for fetal heart rate monitoring. And fetal heart rate should accelerate 10 to 15 bit per minute in 10 minutes in response to the body movement. And this, it means it is reactive. And reactive means normal. Reactive means good. 
the construction test test little bit more here due to the compression of the fetal head by the cervix or illicit of vaginal reflex it should be altered fetal heart rate return to the baseline in the same time the contraction end intervention continue monitoring so if fetal heart rate return to the baseline after the contraction end is usually due to the utero placental insufficiency right so keep it mind something when the baby's head is going down towards the back canal with time and contraction we call a circulation but if it is not delivered with time and contraction we call discyclation so discyclation again divided early late and variable so utero placental insufficiency one of the cause of discyclation and it would be late discyclation so if patient has a utero placental insufficiency it lead to decrease the fetal heart rate after contraction and fetus develop uh, fetus develop fetal hypoxia so what should be the intervention as they are in first of all change the position left lateral give them oxygen IV fluid, lateral position, also discharge the piton and be prepared for C-section, also inform healthcare provider. If patient has a early disclaration, like head compression, nothing you have to do, only observation. if patient have a variable discoloration like cord compression also lateral position give them oxygen and c section so here showing umbilical cord compression so this is the umbilical cord the picture and this cord sometimes holding to the neck of the baby we call cord compression if the cord compression it lead to variable discoloration or sometime variable discoloration is produced because of the combination of early and late discoloration right so now talking about what are the intervention intervention lateral or tandem birth position change the mother position lateral position admin oxygen and prepare for c section cesarean section and inform doctor next non press test right what is that non press test or called no contraction test it is reactive or positive is good so non press test reactive means normal non press test would do to check the fetal heart rate and fetal heart rate should accelerate 10 to 15 beat in 10 minute in response to the body movement very ability of fetal heart rate right it is called reassurance and circulation means if the fetal heart um, fetal head go down in relation to the time of delivery 
or contraction, we call acceleration. Acceleration with fetal movement reassures hmm? it is good, but decicleration is not good. Another test we call contraction press test, right? So early decicleration, fetal head is pressed against the women's pelvis. So if you if NCLEX would ask what are the cause of early decicleration, you can say it, head compression early. Head compression again, mother pelvis require no intervention, it is okay, but need observation. And left decicleration because uteroplacental insufficiency, it is not good, bad, require intervention, turn the mother to left, lateral position, admin oxygen by marks, discontinue oxytocin and communicate to the inter, uh, informed physician and prepare mother for C-section, right? And in, if mother have a left decicleration, hmm, another uteroplacent insufficiency and variable decicleration, hard cause, reason being cord compression, umbilical cord compression, require change maternal positioning, lateral or tundral birth position, give them oxygen, prepare for C-section, do not confuse with prolapse of umbilical cord, right? Two things. And next go for ectopic pregnancies. Here a question about the ectopic pregnancy. So ectopic pregnancy, a condition where the fertilized egg attached outside the uterus and it, if it is untreated, it may lead to the life-threatening bleeding. So in this picture, this is the uterus. So, and this is the fallopian tube and this is the fimbria. An ovary discharge ovum and sperm is moving through the uterus along the fallopian tube to get fertilized the ova. And when sperm and ova united, they form a zygote. And this zygote then move away through the fallopian tube to the uterus. And uterus is the place where zygote is implementation occur. But if in a medical condition, zygote implementation does not occur inside the uterus, where the fertilized egg or ova is attached outside the uterus, like fallopian tube, like broad ligament, we call ectopic pregnancies. Sometimes it is called tubal pregnancy as well because of fallopian tube, right? So if mother, unfortunate mother have it, it is present with some sign and symptom like pain in the abdomen, one-sided pel pelvic pain, bleeding, or rectal fissure. Definitely, we go for the diagnosis and diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy is difficult and is done by imaging and blood test. And if you ask me, what are the treatment option, right? Because if it is untreated, it is a life-threatening condition to the mother. 
and require immediate removal of embryo through the medication or surgical removal. A question here. A foreign weeks gestation, a client report feeling a sharp abdominal pain and a shoulder pain. Assessment finding include diaphoresis means sweating, heart rate 120 beat per minute and blood pressure 86 over 48 means hypotension, tachycardia. Also patient has a pain, abdominal pain. Which action should the nurse implement next? Check the hematocrit. Number B, admin pain medication. Number C, increase the rate of IV fluid. Number D, monitor the client for contraction. So definitely we are not a doctor, we are RN, we do not give the pain medication, right? And check the hematocrit. Hematocrit is important, but not here, not the priorities, right? Monitor the client for contraction. We can do it, but it is best option. Tell mother not to take anything by mouth, nothing by mouth and give them IV fluid, right? It is the answer. So what are the risk factor of ectopic pregnancy? Maybe patient has a, if patient have a history of the PIT, pelvic inflammatory disease or pelvic inflammatory disease because of chlamydia, risk factors. Now here going to talk about the diabetes mellitus, in pregnancy and gestational diabetes. So this is the complication, right? So first of all, let me talk about the diabetes mellitus. We call gestational diabetes. So pregnancy, diabetic mother. During the first trimester, maternal insulin need decrease. During the second or third trimester, maternal insulin need increase. Fetal produce own insulin and chance to develop macrosomia. Macrosomia means big baby, bigger baby. Newborn infant of diabetic mother, the risk for hypoglycemia, hyperbilirubinemia, respiratory distress syndrome, hypocalcemia, and polyhydramions or congenital anomalies. So if the extra glucose passing through the placenta and is metabolized by the fetus. So chance to develop gestational diabetes. And this causes the excess insulin to be secreted by the fetus, which act as a growth hormone. After the birth, the newborn may become, develop some complication like hypoglycemia, right? Hypoglycemia is yes, there is a sudden drop the glucose, particularly maternal, and or increase the insulin produced by the fetus. It's a common problem. Or hyperbilirubin, respiratory distress syndrome, hypocalcemia, polyhydramions, or congenital anomalies like Macrosmia. Gestational diabetic more appears in the second trimester of pregnancy and disappear after the birth of the baby. So who is under the risk? 
So in this picture, you can see excess fluid, which is called polyhydramions, excess amniotic fluid surrounding the fetus because of uncontrolled blood sugar. So if mother is older than 25, family history of diabetic mellitus, if BMI, body mass index more than 30, or previous feeders wetting more than nine pound. So what are the tests we can do? Scanning 24 to 28 weeks of pregnancy does not require the fasting. If glucose is 50 grams, most gestational diabetic are controlled with modification of the diet. So if uh, what are the other problem? Hmm? So what are the other complication? Gestational hypertension, hypertension plus protein urea plus edema. So pregnancy induced hypertension we call it. Because of pregnancy, mother developed hypertension. So it is very important to control. If you do not control, pregnancy induced hypertension causes some complication like weight gain, edema develop, and protein urea. When mother, pregnant mother have a high blood pressure, protein urea, and weight gain or edema, these three features together, right? We call pregnancy induced hypertension or preeclampsia. So preeclampsia, patient blood pressure more than 160 over 110 millimeter of mercury and protein urea more than five gram or three pluses. Also, mother developed in case of preeclampsia with signs, some sign and symptom like headache, hyperflexia, visual disturbance, and decrease urine output. Here in the picture showing preeclampsia, high blood pressure, hypertension, weight gain, protein urea, protein present in urine, and also edema develop. So when all of the signs symptom, we call preeclampsia, pregnancy induced hypertension, Imagine a mother have all of the signs symptoms, but no seizure. It is preeclampsia. If mother have all of the signs symptoms plus involuntary movement of muscle or seizure, it is called eclampsia. So it is the complication of pregnancy. Definitely we have to give something because Pregnancy induced hypertension lead to preeclampsia, and preeclampsia lead to eclampsia. And if mother habit, we have to go for observation and give them magnesium sulfate, we call Maxalf. So if maternal hypertension if, if it is mild, hmm. so it is okay, go for observation. If it is severe, means increase at least 30 to 40 millimeter of mercury. And maternal hypertension lead to finally eclampsia, where blood pressure is more than 160 over 110 systolic blood pressure even greater with convulsion or with scissor, we call eclampsia. So monitor for the sign of meg. So if you give them meg self, 
So you see, administration magnesium sulfate as prescribed, risk for uterine acne and fetal depression, and monitor for sign of magnesium toxicity if you give the magnesium. So if I see magnesium toxicity, first priority stop to the magnesium infusion. And uterine output, urine output if less than 30 ml per hour. Respiratory distress, heart, uh, respiratory rate less than 12. Or patellar reflex less than two. Magnesium level more than eight milligram per day. So it is the sign of magnesium toxicity. So if you see any one of them, we have to stop the infusion of magnesium. Then also antidot. What are the anti? What are the name of antidot? Hmm? It is called calcium gluconate. So NCLEX board asks that question. What are the antidote of magnesium sulfate? Calcium gluconate. Scissor precursor is very important. Decrease the stimuli and pad the side ray. Right? The other problem or complication is called HELLP. Sometimes we call it HELP syndrome. ACE stands for hemolysis, hemolysis. E stands for elevated. L stands for liver. E stands for enzyme. So elevated liver enzyme. Le, A L T A S T. Both are liver enzyme. And also, Second L for low platelet count. So if your patient have a hemolysis with elevated liver enzyme with lower platelet count, all together we called HELLP syndrome, right? If it is not treated, it leads to DIC. DIC stand for disseminated intravascular coagulation and bleeding occur and it lead to death. So this is the, we are talking about the high blood pressure. Sometimes mother develop hypotension also. It is also the complication. So if mother develop hypotension, we should stop the piton, turn to the left side, give them oxygen, and give them IV fluid. Now, a little bit more, the danger sign of severe acanthia, like headache, upper right quadrant or epigastric abdominal pain, visual disturbance and blindness, decrease urine output and pulmonary edema. Right? In this picture showing the assessment of neurological system and testing sense and reflexes. Right? So, HELP syndrome, as I told you, hemolysis, elevated liver enzyme. What are the name of liver enzyme? AST, ALT, low platelet count. If your patient have a magnesium sulfate toxicity, if you count the respiratory rate, it should be less than 12 bit per minute. And DTR means reflexes, right? It should be less than two, right? So 
all of the reflexes should be go down or hyperalephexia. So magnesium secondary effect cause fetal respiratory distress and uterine hypotonia, bogey uterus and bleeding. Very important for NCLEX sport. Here talking about the prophoblastic disease, right? So trophoblastic disease, other term is called gestational trophoblastic disease. So it is a term we use for a group of pregnancy related tumor. And this tumor are very uncommon. And they appear when cells in the uterus start to proliferate, right? So the most common trophoblastic disease are hydratidiform mole or choriocarcinoma. Like here talking about, this is the picture of hydratidiform mole or molar pregnancies, right? So first of all, if mother habit, we go for the assessment, non-detectable fetal heart rate. So if you put the stethoscope or ultrasound, we will not get any fetal heart rate because mother, if this is full of molar pregnancy or vaginal bleeding is there, right? If mother contain the baby, no bleeding at all fetal height greater than expected. Also, sto a snowstorm appearance, like this picture in ultrasonogram. What are the interventions? We, if we see this, we go for curatives, means cleaning, monitor for HCZ, for one year or more, risk to develop choriocarcinoma and request mother to avoid pregnancy for one year. So this is the picture or this is the picture of hydratity for mole or molar pregnancy. So molar pregnancy is an abnormal form of pregnancy in which non-viable fertilized egg is implanted in the uterus and will fall to come to the town. And molar pregnancy is a gestational trophoblastic disease, right? And which grows into the mass in uterus that has swollen or chorionas bilai. And choriocarcinoma, this one, it is the malignant tumor of the uterus that origin in the cell of chorion of the fetus. Next go, third uh, trimester complication or heart trimester bleeding, most common placenta previa and abruptio placenta. So in the, this picture, we can see, you see, this is the external os, okay? And this is the bath canal or vagina and uterus internal membrane and this is normal, but here showing placenta detached from you can wall. In this picture, it is okay, but this one is detached and this one is very rich positional location. Anytime can cause some bleeding because placenta just close to the 
bath canal. So one of the complications is called placenta previa and abrupt show placenta. Placenta previa, the bleeding should be painless, right? Or bleeding should be bright red. No, if have it, if his mother have it, no vaginal examination should do and diagnosis by ultrasound, no labor or dilation is allowed. So placenta previa, partial or complete covering the uterus or cervical os by the placenta, you see? So partial or complete cover of the cervical os by the placenta. This is the placenta. It is called placenta previa. If the bleeding occur, bleeding should be painless. We call painless vaginal bleeding. It is bright red and may or may not be visible. And it is more common after the seven month of pregnancy and common in older mother, multi-parity, right? So if we see anything like this, we never ever go for vaginal examination. What else? Abruptio placenti, or we call placenta abruptio. Placenta abruptio is painful Whereas the placenta previous painless, uterine rigidity, uterine titani means involuntary movement. Also, concealed hematoma or dark red vaginal bleeding. Whereas the placenta previa, bright red bleeding. And fetal is a severe distress. And lead to the DIC. So placenta abruptio is a premature separation of placenta from uterine wall, like this. It, it is okay here, but when it is premature rupture, separation like this picture, second picture, like this picture, premature separation of placenta from uterine wall. It causes painful dark red adrenal bleeding, risk factor, mother chance to develop pregnancy-induced hypertension, multi, uh, and also multi a risk factor, trauma, or cocaine user. And also the client will need and Pregnancy uh, emergency C section means cesarean section. Same picture showing here, it is normal placenta. And this placenta is premature separation from uterine wall. And this one, partial or complete covering of the cervical os by the placenta, we call placenta previa. All is the complications. So cord prolapse occur in presence of the rupture of the membrane and either occur or overt. So in this picture, this is the membrane supposed to ruptured and cord, umbilical cord is came outside. So it is the umbilical cord descent alongside presenting part sometime, right? So prolapse cord or cord prolapse, if happening, as a RN, what should do? We never put 
the cord back inside. This is the nursing intervention. And also with sterile gloves, we use and left presenting part of, of the cord or place the mom in tandem bar or knee chest position. So cord prolapse occur when membrane rupture or breakdown. Also check fetal heart rate after membrane broken down. Do not try to reintroduce the cord, means never put the cord back inside. And also protect the cord from desecration, means not to be get is dry or less oxygen supply or blood supply. Also release the pressure on the cord, right? When we're dealing like this picture or this picture, we use the sterile gloves and lift the presenting part of, of the cord or tell or request mother in handle bar or knee chest position. In this picture, showing the knee chest position, right? So if knee chest position, oxygen supply will be increased or tail for tendal butt position for stirring, right? One question that a client in a labor at 39 weeks is, Ambulating when she said, my water broken. 39 weeks, mother said broken, which is the first priorities as a RN. So which, what RN supposed to do? Number one, check the color of embryonic fluid and assess the uterine contraction Number B, escort the client to labor room and assess the fetal heart rate. Number C, escort the client to labor room and notify provider. Number D, have the client to lie on bed and check her vital sign. Correct answer is number B, the escort the client to the labor room and assess the fetal heart rate. 